Hey everybody, back with another quick video here. I was doing some follow-up on one of my previous videos because something stuck at, you know, um, stuck out to me that when I was testing some 74 161s, and I'll link to the previous video, and this um, on this BNK 864 programmer, and I was testing them on this TL 866 programmer, and I found some interesting information that I wanted to share. First, a quick background. When I first got this BK864, I believe I, I, I've done a couple videos, I think, I can't remember, but I realized or I noticed that when it was testing some 161 chips, it would actually fail. And then in my last video, I tested one that's even older. Let me see if I can actually zoom in on this damn thing see if we can actually see the difference in manufacture there so that's newer right there I don't know what the date code is on it um, but you can see it and this one's older it was a used pool and it's so worn you can't even barely see it so I mean it's old it's probably like 1980s or something and this one passed and this one failed. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. All right, so in the BK864, um, I'm gonna do device, IC test vectors, choose 74 TTL. Um, now here it says ICC, and I think it's like something, I something current or something like that. Um, I can't remember what the first IC stands for. I think it's something current or whatever. Um, and I think it's the maximum current that it can conduct or something. I have to read the data sheet or something like that. 200 um, milliamps actually sounds like a lot um, to me. I think, I don't know for TTL if it should be that high or not. I can't remember. But it's different based off of what type of um, TTL chip you have and stuff. All right, but anyway, we're choosing 75 TTL. I, I need to do some more research there to kind of explain it because I don't really fully understand it myself. Choose 74161. We put the old chip in real quick. And we test it, and it tests fine. And we can loop test it. I've shown this before, and it's just running over and over and over again, passing without a problem, right? Hit escape. We can also go through step by step and and basically it's setting up the chip it's putting you know ground is on pin eight. Oh crap sorry about that <laughs> um i have to hit y for yes okay ground five volts and then it says all right i'm applying high voltage on pins one two low voltage you know on pin three low on four five you get it this is a 161, so we're really concerned about outputs 11 through 15. Um, so everything else is kind of an input, right? And it just goes through, and now I'm on test vector one, right? And it's passing. And test vector two, and it's passing. And it has basically what it's expecting and then what it's re reading here, right? It says it's reading low level on pin 15, and that's what it was expecting. And then on pin 11, reading low level that's what I was expecting all, pa all fine okay good I'm trying to find it where it's a uh, now it's saying high high low 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 it's reading that right and then you get to I think vector nine or eight I think let me see oh actually so the C is a pulse so when you see C it's pulsing it's sending a low high low on that pin and then measuring the outputs, right? And it's just going through different combinations, seeing based off of what the inputs are on the, you know, inputs of the chip, if the outputs are responding in an expected way. That's basically what the test vector is, and there's multiple input combinations and multiple output combinations that I can test, etc. All right, here you have uh, the other chip, right? And I know this chip works. Well, I thought this was going to be a, a quick video, but maybe not. All right, and I just put that chip in, and I'm going to, to uh, 
hit no. I'm just going to test it. And it says it failed on test vector number 9. Right? Can't get past tech ve test vector one number 9. But I know this chip is good. And if I test it in the TL866, it will test fine as well. So, that brought me to look at help. And I'm going to search for vector. Hopefully you guys can see this. Or read it, I guess. Um, basically, it's just saying, hey, you can... All the tests, this is how you run it. And it's, you know, it's running it based off the vectors described in these files, right? And so... I'll show that in a second, how you can create your own vectors. Um, but it says here, uh, testing of IC is done using test vectors at some pretty low speed. Now I was reading, and I'll link to this thread, I was reading because there's actually a, um, an open source project that makes the software for this TL866 compatible on Linux. And I, I found something that was interesting on that. Um, but it, it's... Um, at pretty low speed and that's because the ability to set it high and pulse the different pins like high low high has to come through in this case a serial cable into this thing it's not like it's programming a chip in the programmer to do this it's kind of like sending those commands from the PC I believe that's the case um, so that's why it says pretty slow the, um, the test vectors cannot detect all defects in the chips. In other words, if an IC test reports fail, then the device is defective. But if the test result is pass, it means the chip passed our test, but it still might not pass, um, uh, pass our test, but it still might not pass the tests that check other mainly dynamic parameters of the tested IC. Okay. Then it says, because the rising and falling edges of programmers are tuned for programming chips, it's basically saying that this programmer, this BK864 or LNIC LIPROG is what I have, um, is programmed for, you know, it's, it's designed to program 2532 EPROMs and other stuff like that. Um, sometime, and the, the rising and falling edges probably aren't fast enough. It could be the issue, right? Um, sometimes... Uh, the test of some chips fails, although the chips aren't defective. Counters, for example. So when you're testing TTL chips that are counters in these TL866 or in the 864, and if it fails, it doesn't necessarily mean the chip is bad. That's what it's basically saying, right? So what I also did was I take the same chip, the one that just tested bad, right? God, this this might be a really boring video. I don't know. Um, go to a device, IC test vectors. Instead of choosing TTL, choose CMOS. Now, even though it says 70 milliamps or 200 milliamps, that's not changing the behavior of the program, I don't think. Um, but what I think the CMOS does is um, set the high and low threshold of what it determines as high signal versus what it determines as a low threshold as different, right? CMOS has a lower threshold. I think 0.8 volts is when um, below 0.8 volts is low or something like that. Um, and then like above three, I can't remember, is high, whereas a TTL, anything between zero and two volts or something like that is low, for example. Um, I'm not giving you the exact numbers because I don't know them off the top of my head. But I'm going to choose 74 CMOS TTL. Even though this is a TTL chip, it's not CMOS. Hit OK. And it passes. All the same tests, all the same test vectors. You know what I mean? If I went through each vector stepwise, which I really don't want to do, but... I'll do it just really fast so you can see it. There's test vector two, three. I mean, I'll get to number nine where it failed before. This is the same darn chip that failed the other test. See, and, it, and it's passing. High, high, low, low. And it's saying reading low on level pin four, blah, 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 right? And it's, and it's working.
it's working fine. I found that interesting, and I bet it has to do, my theory is it has to do with um, just the programmer, how it's interpreting a high or low signal based off of the levels that are um, associated with a CMOS chip versus a TTL chip. The other thing I wanted to show real quick, uh, cancel that, is if you come to, let me find this, find target, all right, if you come to the directory where the um, LabProg software is installed, you can actually find Where is it at? Oh, right here. Um, CMOS.lib file and 74TTL file. And you can edit this, open this with Notepad. And you can actually modify the existing test vectors right here. So you got, you know, each line is basically a different tech, test vector. So there's three test vectors for 7400. Um, and it just you know goes through the thing and you can cut and paste and create your own you know vector file or change it or anything like that and I actually did that in this specialty where's my specialty at if I can find it example where's my s there we go open with notepad so I created a 74-161 um, test vector where you have G is ground, 1 is high, X is, I think it doesn't matter, it's like high impedance or something like that. Um, and so you can have each of the test vectors going through and then semicolon is like a comment, for example. All right, so anyway, with that knowledge and we have the, how a 74, I mean, sorry, we have how the BK864 or the LNIC software um, tests these TTL chips. If you have replacement vector files, and it's pretty much all the vector files are in this same format, like you can see here, I actually commented out most of the test vectors beyond test vector 9, um, as an example. Um, you can run your own, own test vectors, for example. So what I'm going to do now, all right, what I'm going to do now is hook up my TL866, which also has a TTL test function. If you go to select IC, no, device, logic IC test, you can, um, and here it shows you the test vectors actually right on the same page. So this is a um, more recent version. I think I'm running, um, what version of software am I running here? version 10.8 but I think they have even a more updated version and you can do 74161 and you can what your VCC voltage is so if it is truly a CMOS low voltage chip you can actually choose the low voltage but this is a 74161 and you can see the test vectors here and there's about 16 test vectors now I also have the TL866 which has basically um, 20 test vectors, if my Notepad Plus is counting correctly. So I think that's 20 lines right there, as you can see. So the TT TL866 does, and I think I said this wrong, I thought it was only doing one test vector because I saw this line. I was misinterpreting it um, in my previous video. It said line 1 through 16, but it's actually line of the vector like this is test vector one test vector two test vector three i don't know it would it have been more clear if they actually didn't call this line but whatever it's fine all right so i want to um put my chips in and hit test and everything's normal it says the test test is complete and looks good that's the old chip this is the newer chip. Hit test, and everything's fine. The only downside is you can't actually loop the test or go test vector by test vector. 
what you can do in the B and K. But you can also see this vector symbols here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me see. Yeah. Get a little bit zoomed up there. Um, zero is input low. One's input high. L is output low. H is output high. Then C is pulse the input. So low, high, low. Z is high impedance. X is ignore. Sorry, I said... Um, X was high impedance, no, but um, Z is high impedance. And then ground and VCC. Okay, so what I could do is actually create my own test vector based off of what we have over here with our B BK864. It would be great if I could just cut and paste this. I haven't figured that part out yet. Let me see. Line 1. Let's, we'll call this a 74-161 special. Like that. Oh my gosh, how do I... I can't remember. Oh, I have to do new line. And modify line. And then I have to manually set this up. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. I mean, look... Oh my god. Alright, let me draw... The, bring this down here a little bit 161 kind of annoying isn't it okay pin 1 is should be 1 pin 2 1 I'm just following down here down below right here but you get the idea you can set up your own test vectors but it's kind of manual I wonder if I can find the file to do this so it's not so difficult pin 16 obviously is going to be voltage Pin 8 is obviously going to be ground, for instance. Um, in this first test vector, 9 is a 1, 10 is a 0, and then it's XXXX, and then this should be L. Um, and then what's 5? We got 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, like that. Save it. Oh my god, did it not... <laughs> uh, Alright, but anyway. Edit. I'll have to modify the line. Alright, give me a second. Alright, so I modified the uh, line and I am going to test just that, which I pulled from the BNK 846. Uh, 864 and it says it tested normal but it's only testing that one vector so it's easy when it's like you know some type of flip-flop or you know maybe an and or an or or something like that where it's you know you can just go to the truth table and set it up when it's these counters and you're pulsing different pins and stuff I don't know I don't even know how to all right well up. I found where the software is, and I think it's a, a DLL file. Um, this info ic2 plus dot DLL, that makes the most sense to me, because there's also this logic user list, maybe? I don't know, let's open that in Notepad. Yeah, it's, it needs to be, um, it's code, so I don't think that's the, that's the issue there other config data, all these dat files and stuff like that, I don't think. User IC UDC file, I tried opening it in Notepad Plus, it's not, um, I'm gonna have to, you would have to decompile this or open it up in like maybe Visual Studio or something, I don't know. I'm not a programmer, so I'm not gonna worry about all that. Anyway, I don't know if that was interesting, y'all, but um, I found it interesting. I learned a little bit more about the abilities of these programmers and how testing counter chips in them probably isn't going to give you, I mean, it'll verify if a pin is shorted and stuff, but it's probably not going to give you the expected results to rely on these device programmers to, tie, to test um, counter TTL or CMOS chips. Um, but anyway, you can modify and load your own vectors even though I think anything beyond maybe a simple vector test, I don't know, I'll probably pass on. 
Um, but it is nice to know. So hopefully this was somewhat helpful. I have no idea, honestly. But I found it interesting. That's it. Cheers.